One way to make cross-country skis is compression molding, a process that uses heat and pressure to bond the components together. First, a computer-guided blade cuts out what will become the ski's underside, called the gliding surface. It's made of pre-assembled fiberglass laminate and polyethylene thermoplastic, a friction-resistant material. They lay it into the bottom half of a mold, then glue on steel edges for grip. This spray makes the adhesive dry faster so that they can apply the principal adhesive, epoxy. A rubber shock absorber goes on the back, followed by a durable plastic reinforcement called the heel piece protector. The ski's wooden core is made of aspen and birch laminated together. Next comes a sheet of fiberglass impregnated with epoxy for extra reinforcement. The wood core is now sandwiched between two high-resistance layers. Then for decoration, a plastic film with a silkscreen design. With everything now in the bottom half of the mold, they can clamp on the top and tape it up to ensure nothing shifts out of place. Then it's into a press that compresses the mold and heats it to 85 degrees Celsius. This activates the epoxy, hardening it in 12 to 15 minutes, depending on the thickness of the ski. Now they do a rough cut to trim off the excess. Then they sand all the edges until they're smooth. They run just the gliding surface across a grinding stone, that white object you see below. This extra step is only for the higher-end models. Another way to make cross-country skis is by a process called reaction injection molding. First, they place the ski's top layer, a fiberglass epoxy sheet, in the mold. Then, the gliding surface, made of pre-assembled fiberglass laminate and polyethylene with a high-resistance backing. Instead of a wooden core in the middle, this press injects a super-resilient plastic. In just three seconds, the injection phase is over and the reaction phase begins. This demonstration shows what happens. First, the polyurethane inflates. Then, it hardens. After eight minutes, it's hardened enough to come out of the mold. They let the ski cure for up to eight hours, at which point it's strong enough to support the weight of a skier. So now these three components, the top layer, the polyurethane middle, and the gliding surface are one. Now comes the finishing. First, they trim and bevel the edges. They sand the gliding surface, then they carve a groove down its length. This gives the ski directional stability. All that's left to do now is decorate the skis. First, the background color in a quick-drying, solvent-based lacquer. They apply the design manually, one color at a time using the silk screening process. A typical design consists of five to seven colors, including the background. To keep the skis looking vibrant, they protect the paint with a coat of transparent varnish.